Hey everybody, so here we go, quest number three. Uh, first, the key to this is understanding this word solution. Okay, so if I were to say uh, solve this equation, 3x is equal to 9. You divide by 3, and x equals 3. Now how do you know that's the solution? Because you plug it into the original equation, and what happens? 3 times 3 equals 9. Well, I have 3 times 3 is 9, and hey, it's true, right? Let's talk about a, a counterexample here. What about 3x equals 9? And I say, well, x equals 4 is the solution. You would say, no, it's not, because I'm going to plug it in right there, and you get 3 times 4, right? And this is supposed to be equal to 9, but this is 12. 12 is not equal to 9. So, no, it's not a solution. And this is a solution. This is the solution right here, solution. So, it's no different in this equation. It's just the equation has two variables. I think the thing that uh, you may have not fully understood is that, hey, this is x and this is y, right? Every ordered pair is in the order x, then y. So if 6 is x, well, let's try it out. Let's let x be 6. And let's let y be negative 2. And let's see if this comes out to be true, just like we did here. See if this equation comes out to be true. Well, we get negative 18 minus 4. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 equals negative 1. OK, let's add these together. We're going to get negative 22. Negative 22 does not equal negative 1. That's not true. It's false. False. So, no, this is not a solution. If it were, then this would have come out to be negative 1 instead of something else. Um, okay. So, let's see. Uh, in 1995, a company had a profit of 144000 In 2005, the profit was 256000 if the profit increased by the same amount each year, find the rate of change of the company's profit per year. This is kind of a key piece that I think people uh, just maybe overlooked, right? Per year, per one year. It doesn't say years, it says year, meaning one, one year. Uh, well, how much did it, uh, how much did it change? How much did the profit change? Well, in 2005, it was 256000 that's up from 144,000, so how much up is it? Well, it's just the difference between those two. So we grab the old calculator, and we say 256,000 minus 144,000, and we get to 112,000. And some of you put 112,000 there. But this happened from, it happened between 1995 and 2005. If this had happened between uh, 2004 and 2005, that would have been how much it changed in one year, because it only took one year. But this took, how many years is that? Well, 2005 minus 1995, that's 10 years. $112,000 increase in profit in five, no, in 10 years, in 10 years. Right, that many dollars in that many years. What's that every year? We just Divide that by 10, divide it into 10 years. So it comes out to be $11,200 per year. There we go. An amusement park charges $15 for admission and $3 per ride. Um, you know, you just, I know that if you took a minute to think about the situation, you would get it. Uh, you, a lot of you are too focused on Oh yeah, what this number goes here, that number goes there. What's the procedure? What am I supposed to do? Right? This is not a to-do situation. Just give it some thought. Right? You understand what it's like to go to an amusement park or maybe go to the fair each year and pay to get in and pay per ride. You know exactly what that's like. You walk up to the gate, you hand them fifteen dollars, right? Then you go to the ticket uh, kiosk and and you give them some money for tickets, right? So let's call it three dollars per ticket for the rides. Right? So you know you're going to pay $15 just to get in, and then you're going to pay $3 for one ride, $3 uh, for another ride, right? so it's $6, $9 for three rides, $12 for four rides. You know exactly what you're doing there, right? If you rode one ride, you'd pay $15 plus $3. If you rode two rides, you'd pay $15 plus twice that, $15 plus three times at three for three rides, 
fifteen dollars plus three times four for four rides, right? You would take the cost per ride and multiply by the number of rides. Well, we want that to just be open. We want it to be anything, right? Think about it this way: we would just leave this spot blank for whatever number of rides we want to plug in there. Instead of writing that, we'll use the letter x, 15 plus 3 times x. x is just a, an open, a blank spot, uh, ready for any number to be plugged in, right? So 15 plus 3x is going to give us the cost, or we could call it the, we could call it y if we want, all right? So that's an equation, right? An equation that gives, right? Gives this value, cost in dollars, for the uh, number of x rides, for x number of rides. Okay. You can use your intuition. I know that you can come up with the answer, but you've got to get off of the idea that math is just a bunch of steps to do. Step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sometimes there's tons of steps, and uh, trying to memorize those steps is not realistic. Understand the situation. You understand what it's like to go to a fair. You understand what it's like to pay for admission. You understand what it's like to pay for rides. Just give it some thought. Number four, graphing this equation. Okay, as I wrote on many tests, and as I've said many, 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 many times, uh, you can always fall back on plugging things in for x, right? Back to basics. The basics of graphing are that a graph is made of points. Graph, points, right? And those points come from having an x and a y. When I have an x and a y, I put that x and that y, and that's the point. That's how I know where the point is, is by the x and the y. So. If we go back to basics, let's just plug in things for x, and something really nice to plug in for x is 0. So we try that. y equals negative 2. Cool. We have a point. Well, did I really need to do all the work of plugging 0 in and writing this all down? I don't think so. I think if I just think about plugging in 0 for x, I know that y is going to be negative 2. This goes away, and y is negative 2. So I know automatically there's a point at negative 2. That's why we could just look here and say, ah. There's a point down there on the y-axis at negative 2, because if I plug in 0, I'll get negative 2 for y. OK, let's try something else for x. Uh, if you'll remember, something else that's really a convenient for x is a number that cancels out the denominator. I think the easiest value for x in that case is 6, positive 6. Right? We could do 12, we could do negative 6, negative 12, but I think positive 6 is the easiest. So I just plugged in 6 for x. Uh, let's do it the long way. We get 30 over 6 minus 2. We multiply it straight across there. We get 5 minus 2, and y equals 3. So we just plugged in 6. We got out 3. Uh, plugged in 6, got out 3. All right. And there, we have enough to draw our line, if we're able to draw a line. OK, so there's our line. But also, uh, you know, if I, if I were to move over another 6, just like I moved over 6 from this point, and I went up 5, I'd go over 6, another 5, over 6, another 5, and maybe now I remember, oh yeah, there's that thing called the slope. I can tell that every time I move over 6, I'm going to wind up adding 5 more to my previous point. Every time I move over 6, over 6, I wind up adding 5 more, right? It's like every 6 seconds, Five more inches of water are added to the container. Right? We talked about that many, many times. Okay, so six seconds later, five more inches of water are added. Six seconds after that, five more inches of water are added. Right, that guy's our slope, which is the same as our rate. Okay, so you can plug those things in per x. Absolutely, do that for the rest of your life. If you never want to progress from that, I, I don't recommend uh, staying in that state, but at, at least you're not guessing. At least you know for sure that these are the are two points on the line, and I can connect it, right, and, and make that line. Um, or you can, you know, progress beyond that, and uh, and remember that I can, or basically do the work in your head of plugging in zero and getting that point at negative two, right? Do that a thousand times, you're going to start to just take this guy right here and put it on the y-axis because you know you plug in zero, you're going to get this number for y, okay? 
And I can see that if I were to plug in six, I'm gonna cancel, I'm gonna get a five, five minus two, right? Just five minus two, that's my other point, okay? I can just go over six and add up five more. Over six, up, over six and add five. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so that does it for that problem. Again, we have another problem just like that, a graphing problem. Uh, we're gonna have a y-intercept of negative two, okay? If you're not sure what I mean by that, all I did was plug in zero for x. Okay? Y equals negative one half times zero. Minus two, zero is what I get here. Y equals negative two, right? So I plugged in zero, got negative two. But I could see that right from the beginning because I've graphed thousands of, of lines in my life and I know that I'm gonna get a y-intercept of negative two, okay? And I know I'm gonna have a slope of negative one half. That means like every two seconds I lose one inch. I go down one inch of water. So two seconds, lose an inch of water, uh, where my slope is go over two and go down one. That's a negative slope. Negative slopes reflect that we're losing something, losing an amount of, of, uh, of inches or dollars or whatever. And we draw our line there. There we go. If you're not sure what I mean by the slope, how, how do you figure that out? Well, just go back to plugging in something for x, right? I'm going to plug in 2 because this 2 is going to divide the 2 that I plug in for x, and that's going to make it easier to do the numbers, right, to work with those numbers. Okay, so I get negative 2 over 2 minus 2. That's negative 1. That's negative 1 right there. Minus 2. Y is negative 3. And look at that. 2, negative 3. I plugged in 2 for x and got negative 3 for y. 2, negative 3. All right. Okay, now let's get right here. Um, this is a graph, as you, as you read here, the following graph is of the distance traveled by a car on Felicia's, uh, traveled by a car on Felicia's road trip over time. Okay, there's time. This is distance. What I'm looking for is do you, do you have an, like an intuitive notion of what the slope of a line is, okay? If this is Felicia's distance in her car uh, at any given time, right? So like uh, here, or, or maybe here. Well, she's not very far away from, say, like uh, her house or something. Here, she's very far away from her house if, if this distance zero is at her house, okay? Here, she's pretty far away from her house. Here, she's closer to her house. Here, she's even closer to her house. Here, she's just as close to her house as she was a second ago or five seconds ago. I don't know how much time that was. And here, she's very, very far away from her house, okay? So when we look at this interval right here, from here to there. Okay, what's going on there? Why is it slanted down like that? What's going on? Well, she has a positive distance, and now she is closer to you know her reference point, like her house, let's say. She was kind of far away, and then she got closer. Well, she, she wants to drive far away, right? She's on a road trip. She wants to go far away, but she's now closer, okay? At the very least, you should say something like she's driving backward in some way. You should say backward. Now, some of you got creative and said like, oh, she, at first she was at a place and then she forgot her keys, so she went towards her house, right? Um, let's see what's going on here. Well, she's still getting closer to her house, still not going you know, like forward on her road trip. She's losing distance. She's getting going back to like, the beginning back to the reference point so she's still driving backward right she's still going back she's not making pr forward progress but uh, she's doing it more slowly driving backward more slowly than she was before okay I need to see that you're understanding that it's uh, still a negative right we're still uh, losing distance but not as quickly right we're not getting to the house or whatever our reference point is as quickly. It's taking a little bit longer, okay? So some of you might have said like, oh, she forgot something, so she drew, drove fast back to her house, towards her house, uh, and then she slowed down because you know maybe she's driving on the freeway here and now she's driving on the, on the residential streets here, that's why she had to slow down. But then she got to her house and she stopped. That's a key thing. She stopped. Look at her distance, it's not changing. What's her speed? What would your speed be like if your distance wasn't changing? You'd be just sitting there. 
right? So her car is stopped. Maybe, you know, in, in some of your stories, it was like, uh, oh, because she's at her house. She's looking for her phone, you know, which she forgot, which is why she went back in the first place. Okay, so she stopped, and now she's moving forward quickly, right? She's going really fast now. Trying to make up for lost time, maybe? She's moving really quickly. That's why this line is so steep, right? Because she's driving fast. Okay. Um, so how much did the total distance change from beginning to end? What I'm asking is from beginning, here's the beginning, right? Here's the beginning and here's the end. How much did the distance change? Well, she was far away and now she's a little bit farther away. She drove a lot, right? But in the end, she only was a little bit farther ahead of where she started, right? So it uh, went up, it increased a little. I wasn't looking for specific numbers. I, if I wanted specific numbers, I would have put specific numbers. Some of you do force numbers in there, and that was okay. But, uh, you know, it increased a little bit. It's, it doesn't have to be that specific. So she made some progress. She, she started a little farther away, a little further down the road than she was when she started. Okay. All right, next question. All right, I gave this question to my algebra class. I made them find the slope, okay? But I gave the slope to you. The slope is 3 sevenths, okay? Means that we move to the right, 7, and up 3, over 7 and up 3, to get to the next point. So think about what just happened. Think about what this is saying. It's saying that at 0 seconds, there are 5 pages that are that have printed out of the, 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 the copy machine. Okay, so like if I go down to Sarah's room and uh, I'm looking to see if my copies are ready and I walk in and five copies are done, like five pages have been printed out already when I walk in the room, right? That could be time zero, there's five copies. And then what happens? Well, I stand there for seven seconds, right? And I have seen in those seven seconds, three pages have come out. But there you go, that's exactly what the slope means, right? Uh, in seven seconds, three pages are printed. Seven seconds later, three pages are printed. I can see that because it's seven seconds instead of zero. Well, that's seven seconds later. That's pretty easy. Uh, and it's eight copies now instead of five. Well, if there was eight now and there were five then, then three must have been printed out. Okay, That's the meaning of the slope. It's the rate. The rate of how many pages per how many seconds. The slope is three over seven. Seven seconds, three pages, all right? So every time this many x's go by, this many y's are uh, added to the total, okay? So seven seconds later, three pages are printed out. Solve the equation. All right, we've got variables on both sides here. So let's add two x to both sides. Like I said, I like to have positive x's, so I do that. Uh, I don't need a positive. Eight is equal to 10x plus 14. Now let's subtract 14 from both sides, and we have negative 6 is equal to 10x, and we'll divide by 10, divide by 10. And now x is negative 6 tenths, or I can simplify to 3 fifths. All right, here we have m is equal to 9 fifths p. Uh, okay, well I have 9 fifths times p. I don't want 9 fifths times p, I want 1 times p. How can I, what can I do to this 9 fifths to make it a 1? Can I subtract 9 fifths? No. These aren't like terms. I can't subtract 9 fifths from 9 fifths p. Okay. That 9 fifths is being multiplied by p. So and if I remember, multiply by the reciprocal of 9 fifths. Well, what's that? That's 45 over 45. 45 over 45, that's 1. 1 p, right? That's just p. Well, I multiply by 5 ninths to make that happen. So I need to multiply by the same thing on the other side. And I could write this a bunch of times, or I could just say 5 ninths, 5 ninths, m is equal to p. p is 5 ninths m. All right. OK, I was very clear about this. No guessing and checking. You're not going to just plug numbers in and uh, say, well, it's, it's this, okay? We can start there. Let's go ahead and start there. Uh, this first place costs $40, okay? 
plus a dollar seventeen for each video. So if I rent one video, it's going to be forty plus one seventeen. If I rent two videos, it's going to be forty plus one seventeen twice. Three videos is going to be forty plus one seventeen three times, and so on and so on and so on. Or forty plus a dollar seventeen times any number of videos. Let's call that number of videos x. Okay, how does it work for the other place? Well, there's no charge to join the club. It just costs three twenty-three for one video. Three twenty-three times two for two videos. Three twenty-three times three for three videos. Okay, or three twenty-three. Three twenty-three times any number of videos. To so if whatever I want that to be five, twelve, thirteen videos. It doesn't matter. I can plug that in for x. And there we go. Now, if you'll notice, if I keep renting from this place, the amount that I pay for the videos is going to go up, but it's going to go up more slowly than this. Like every time I rent a video from this place, it's going to go up 323, right? So at some point, this is going to get more expensive than this, okay? Uh, at first, it's cheaper, and then it's more expensive, and at some point, they're exactly the same cost, assuming I can rent a fraction of a video. So at the point that they're equal, just after that is when this place will become a better deal than this place, okay? It's because it's cheaper per video. Now, if it was more expensive per video, then there's no way that it would ever be cheaper because it would cost money to be a member and it would cost money, more money per video. Why would I ever go there? I would rent at the place that costs less. But because it costs less per video, this place is gonna be more expensive at some point. And it's gonna happen right after they are the same cost. So this is the cost of the one place, it's the cost of the other place, and we solve for x, the number of videos that makes both places the same. And we'll subtract 117x from both sides, and 40 equals 323 minus 117, 206, $2.06. 2 so if you think about it, um, whatever number of videos it costs for both of these to be the same, it's the same as uh, like renting videos at $2.06 a piece and getting up to the $40 that you pay to join that place. Okay. Anyway, well, let's solve for x by dividing by 2.06. How many times have we divided both sides by the thing that's multiplied by x? So many times. Uh, this is going to come out to be a decimal. Like a big, long decimal. 40 divided by 2.06, so x is about 19.42, right? x is close to 19.42. But you can't rent 19.42 videos, right? And even if you could rent 19.42 videos, that would be the, you know, that would mean that they're exactly the same cost. But we want the first club to be cheaper, right? So this makes them exactly the same. If I rent just a little more, right, a little more, more videos than that, then this place is a better deal. And well, we can't rent 19.42, but if we rent 20, right, then they'll be, this will be a better deal. Okay, we can even try it out. Let's see. 40 plus 1.17 uh, times the 20 videos we're gonna rent. Okay, that costs $63.40. What about the other place? Well, it costs 3.23 times 20 videos. $64.60, right? So now that's more expensive than the first place. Uh, whew, what a doozy. Let's first start by distributing the three. So yeah, and then let's also collect like terms on this side. So we'll do two things at once. So 11x minus 4x, that's 7x plus 6. That's equal, don't add 8 plus 3, right? Multiplication before addition. 3 times negative x is negative 3x, and 3 times 8 is 24. All right, well, I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to collect the 8 and the 24 together. 8 plus 24 is 32 minus 3x. Okay, now we have variables on both sides. We just did this a few problems ago. Let's add 3x to both sides. So then we get a positive 10x on the left. Positive 10x uh, plus 6 is equal to 32. Subtract 6, subtract 6. 10x equals uh, 22. And divide by 10, divide by 10. And x, uh, not 22, what am I thinking? 26. 
So x equals 26 over 10, or I could simplify it to 13 over 5. Divide them both by 2. OK, so those work. All right. So now we have, like, if we're really good at, at solving equations, you know, just solving for x, moving numbers around, subtracting from both sides, dividing on both sides, and all that kind of stuff, then we should be able to do that even if the stuff that we're adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing are just, you know, letters. They're just stand-ins. Okay. So in this problem, we distributed. Why don't we distribute it here? We'll get 6 minus 5. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 5 times x is 5x. OK. Here, like uh, in this part of the problem, we had 10 times x something times x plus something else is equal to some number, right? Well, here's the guy I want to get. I want to get x, x by itself. So I'm going to get rid of all the other stuff that's on this side with the x, OK? I don't want to divide by 5 yet. Let's just save that. Let me just make that a rule. Save the division until the end. Get the x term by itself. So we can subtract c. c minus c is 0. We can subtract c from this side. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Now there's just a big old 0 here, and all that's left is 5x. And we'll add 5 to both sides. 5x equals h minus c plus 5. And last thing, we're going to divide by 5. So x is equal to h minus c plus 5. All that divided by 5. Okay. Let's solve uh, this for m. OK, very similar. Very, very similar to this problem. All right, we got, we're adding something on to the term that we want to get by itself. We're adding a 10q, so let's get rid of it. Let's cancel it out. Minus 10q from this side. OK, I can't subtract 10 from 10q, so subtracting 10 won't work. OK, I can't divide by 10 right now. I could, but it would be just not helpful. I need to cancel out the 10q. I need to get rid of it. Let's, let's just eliminate it. Let's do the opposite of adding 10q. Let's subtract 10q. Right? 10q minus 10q is 0. And so on the left side, we have 4m all by itself. On the right side, 54 minus 10q, they're not like terms. So we can, we're just going to have to do this. Right? Just leave it the way that it says, 54 minus 10q. There's no combining those. Last thing, we divide by 4, and we have it. m is equal to 54 minus 10q q divided by 4. And that's it. That was the last one, I believe, unless there's one of these. No, it's good. All right. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if I can clarify anything. Uh, appreciate your time. I'll talk to you later. Bye.